I, I, um, and I, I don't remember the exactly, but my wife got us on a training program and we, uh, we started training for hiking because we had a scheduled trip to the Grand Canyon. And I think it was eight weeks after surgery, we hiked from the top to the bottom and back up in, in 10 hours. What? Are you kidding me? Yeah. And then, and this then was how many weeks, how many weeks after surgery? Eight, eight weeks. Eight weeks. And then, um, and then, gosh, I think it was 15 weeks. I, um, I did, I, I really believe it was 15 weeks. I did a triathlon and I beat my time in the Redondo Beach triathlon that I did two years before. Hello there, everybody, and welcome to the ADR Livecast. I'm really excited. Uh, today, uh, or tonight, I guess, depending on when you're watching this, um, I've got two very special guests uh, to discuss ADR. So one of them is Sue Hart, who uh, is a, a case manager with Ananda and herself has undergone uh, artificial disc replacement, both lumbar and cervical is that right sue or just lumbar just lumbar just lumbar okay and then um our 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 extra special guest they're both special our extra special guest is dr david noonan uh who is a chiropractor and has also been a marathon runner and power weight competitive weight lifter um, and also has had uh, artificial disc replacement so um, we've got a great time in front of us. David, say hi. Sue, say hi. Hi, hi everybody. Uh, so um, if, if you're watching this on a recording, I just, we want to apologize. We initially tried to run it as a live cast and had a technical difficulty. So uh, just had some issues and couldn't. So we're doing the interview anyway, and we'll just share it on the recording for everybody. I would encourage you, if you're watching this, say hi, go into the chat log and say hi and where you're from and post any questions because we will, um, I, uh, uh, David and Sue will be looking at the questions on the replays as well. So they would be happy to respond to your questions and I'll do my best uh, as well to relay any information that I can. Um, so before we go too far though, what I thought I would do is give you a quick overview of what in the heck disc replacement is um, and how it works. And since uh, David had cervical disc replacement, um, I've got a video that I can run that will uh, basically kind of show this for us. And so let me see how this works. I'm always curious to see how well a video is going to run through a live cast. So let me try to share it and then we'll do it. Let me go here and here and let me run the video. In fact, while we're doing, doing this, David, why don't you kind of talk us through it? Yeah, okay. Um, well, yeah, I mean, obviously we're seeing a, a disc and, um, you know, the, the little yellow guys sticking out of their nerves, that's between the, uh, between the bones, the, the, the nerves come out between the bones and then the, the disc is the joint between. As the disc degenerates, uh, compression or the disc can actually bulge out and push into the, um, into the nerve. And, but we're really talking about degenerative discs to where the disc isn't, isn't functioning properly and we're losing function. We have lots of pain because that disc, as you can see, uh, is, is insulting that nerve there. So, um, yeah, in fact, this one looks like it's extruded out the back and, sure. and you, can, you can also see the disc space here is, is compressed. Uh, there's not nearly the same amount of uh, room between the discs as perhaps otherwise. Right. So we'll go ahead and I'll play it some more here. So the process, right, is they remove that artificial or remove the original disc um, and then go through the process of preparing that uh, site for implementation of the uh, implant, in this case, the M6. And there you go. Wow. So, um, did you watch uh, all these videos and things like this before you had yours to learn? Yeah, more? I watched them all. I watched a few uh, live uh, videos of the actual implants. I, you know, I, I watched as much as I could find and yeah. um, before I came down. Yeah. So. All right. So on this one here, you've got uh, this tool, particular tool um, cuts very small keels or, yes. or uh, tracks rather for four keels. Um, and that's to help the implant when it goes in lock itself in place just immediately. 
Uh, in fact, I don't know, David, if you had this discussion with Dr. Ritter Lang, but he told me that between the between the keels and the pressure of the spine and things like that, that that disc is pretty much locked in there from day one. Though it takes some weeks, some weeks and months to fuse in fuse in place. Is that right? Uh, yeah, I mean, well, I was uh, I was told that it would would be uh, about six weeks before the you know before the the fusion took place, and then um, but right away, I mean, my questions were, were you know how how long can it will it be before I can you know, swim and, um, you know, and I was talking to Dr. Spiller at the time and he was like, you can do it, you know, <laughs> with the accident, you know and, and everything I asked, it was like, you can do it. So the only thing that you really don't want to do is have a big impact. So, um, like, like you don't want to get in a car wreck and have the airbag pop in your face or something and have a really big impact right after surgery, you know, but, you know, uh, six weeks in, um, you know, you can, you can do that. So, uh, and, and, you know, obviously it becomes very, very strong and, and, you know, the, the discs have been tested and, uh, you know, the bone will adhere to the disc. So it's not going to break or the, the worst thing is, is to have it migrate or move after it's been implanted. So, but between the, the press fit and like you said, the keels, um, you know, we were up and walking around and, uh, I was doing, you know, I was doing incredible things, you know, right out of surgery. So, uh, amazed most people. So this is the M6 disc and M6 uh, cervical disc. And I don't know if you noticed there, but uh, in fact, I'll scroll it back a little bit. There's a coating uh, on the top that's designed, right, to encourage bone growth so that the vertebrae will actually grow into the top and bottom surfaces of the implant. Yes. Right. So yes. gets put in, put into place. And I think it's a, good view of the motion that it restores. And, uh, you know, I'm going to get to a little bit about how you of all people, you know, someone who specializes in chiropractic and non-surgical care ended up, cho ended up choosing to have this particular surgery. Um, and in this particular case, if you, uh, for those people watching the M6 disc, it's one of the very few discs that, not only does it accommodate motion from t side to side and front to back, as you can see, but it also has a shock absorption function, um, which uh, most discs on the market really lack. So anyway. Well, I think, can I add to that? Because, oh, absolutely. Because one of the things is the translational movement, okay? And it's this kind of movement. And, and, and this has that as well because of, because of the annular uh, you know, middle of this thing. So, and that is, you know, I mean, you get the, you get the lateral and you, you get the forward and backward bending and you also get the compressive forces, but, but this, this lateral shifting and uh, that is what causes most of the time, if, if it's not moving, that's what causes a, a, a lot of the discs to migrate on the bone. So um, it really has all of the degrees of motion that, uh, that a disc, has you know so they really did a great job re-engineering the disc all right so let's, let's get to your story so tell us how you got hurt and tell us how you ended up getting to the point where you were deciding right. that surgery was the thing yeah well you know i mean you, you mentioned i'm a chiropractor and um you know my 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 thing is like hey there's a there's a place for all um you know for all methods of healing and drugs and surgery last you know we want you know, that's that's me I, I want you know i don't want to take a bunch of drugs i don't want to have surgeries most people don't um i think i don't think they do uh, but but there are places where all of a sudden you get in a situation where you've tried everything else and um, there is a place for surgery and so um my my particular thing was is um, I had a compression fracture happen in my neck years and years ago playing football. Um, I ran through the line. I was running back, ran through the line, and hit my hat on the top of, um, you know, with a linebacker, bam. And, uh, you know, it, it compressed. It compressed my disc. It compressed the, the, the bone, and it, it, it shortened the bone, you know. And so um, when you're young, you, you, you get through that stuff. And, I mean, it really didn't – it wasn't like a – shearing force on, on my neck. It was just compression. So it swole up, got very sore. I had some issues with it, but the swelling went away and I, I revived, you know, I redeemed all, all the function and everything and, and went on years after that. Um, 
you know, with, with not even thinking about it so much. It, it didn't bother me. You know, I had neck pain, but um, it was it was a few years later, I got into some competitive bodybuilding and uh, got into some, some higher level ones, like um, international competitions. And um, I, I really thought, you know, that I was going to be the next, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, and here I was. But all of a sudden, um, my neck, uh, flared up and I actually lost strength. I could barely hold my arm up when I was laying down. So um, it really affected the motor nerve. So if you're looking at a, 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 if you're looking at a nerve, the, the fibers on the outside of the nerves are sensory. So you feel the pain first, but if it, if it, if it pushes deep enough into the nerve, you get into the mo motor function. And if you're starting to lose motor skills, you know, you've got some problems. And so, um, went to uh some doctors went to an ortho went to he sent me to, to a physical therapist typical round of uh of what what happens there um the swelling did go down at that time i was young i was in my 20s um uh, i never got back into bodybuilding but i got very very motivated uh to find out about my spine because i i had i had still some lack of function i never got it all back and I wasn't able to actually get back into my training and competitive bodybuilding the way I, you know, and that was, that kind of derailed my plans. So um, going through school, learning about the spine, learning about, um, you know, how the, how the spine works and you know, really, really, you know, delving into it um, became my passion. And of course, um, I was able to help many, many people uh, even avoid surgeries, you know, because the, because you know, and we, we talked about, you know, there's a lot of people who debate whether the fat record is good or bad, but um, the bottom line is, is if you have a, I don't know if you want to talk about, should I talk about this now or? Yeah, just go keep, for it. All right. Well, I mean, and, and the thing is with chiropractic, and I'll just, I'll just give a, a little overview of this because it's, it's important for people to understand. Um, our, and I actually. And by the way, while he's doing that, if you're watching this and you happen to have a negative view of chiropractic, okay, just check it at the door for just a moment because whether or not you happen to agree with chiropractic, um, I think we can all agree that David knows more about the spine than the average bear um, because of the training and experience he's had and in working with clients. And for that reason, even if you don't think, even if you're not a fan of chiropractic, um, just understand the journey that uh, David's gone through uh, in this process. Me personally, I told David before we got on, I know some people who have been really helped by chiropractic and I know some people who probably spent more time than they should have in chiropractic. And, um, and like it, like anything, I think there's, you know, you can get some bad actors that spoil, spoil things. And uh, anyway, so David, go for it. Tell just, just let it. Yeah. Have, okay. have the floor is yours, man. Yeah, good. All right. And, and you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, it doesn't matter, you know, whether it's chiropractic or financial advisors or, you know, medical doctors. I mean, there's good and bad and everything. So um, if you're having a bad experience at your chiropractor, I would say, you know, um, you know, don't give up on chiropractic, you know, find a chiropractor that suits you better. Because, um, you know, I've gone through many, many, many medical doctors in my, uh, in my day. And as a matter of fact, in my search for, uh, you know, for a solution to this, I talked to many, many surgeons, many of, of which I, I, I had no faith in at all. So, um, you know, and these guys were renowned surgeons in Los Angeles area. And I'm like, dude, you're not, you're not touching me. And so, uh, anyway, I got a little, um, I got a little prop here. It's just on my shelf here in my office, in my home office. Um, but, um, if you understand the, the disc, this is just a, uh, this is just a, um, a section of the spine, right? And we have a disc, and then we have the nerves that are coming out, kind of like the movie. And, um, and oh, I just froze for a minute, so. Yeah, that's okay. it. you're good. I froze my speech because of my, my Yeah, camera. yeah. The funny thing is, is your audio, the audio didn't freeze, but the video did. So you freezing with it was just fine, too, I guess. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah. good. Anyway, so here's the deal with chiropractic. The disc is um, avascular, doesn't have any blood supply, okay? The bone has lots. As a matter of fact, we, create, bone, we create, create blood cells in our bone, but the disc doesn't have any blood supply. It requires, but it's alive. It's tissue that's alive and it's living. It requires, it requires um, nutrients to, and it requires hydration to stay healthy. So it requires motion. 
okay? And when we have injury, when we have something happen, when it could be a slip and fall, it could be a, a, a auto accident or whiplash, it could be any kind of thing, right? Um, the, the, it wants to splint it and it will heal with scar tissue. And scar tissue will heal around it and it will immobilize it, right? It will immobilize it so it can heal. And that's just a natural healing process that, that happens with everything, right? I mean, if you hurt your elbow, it's going gonna, it's gonna to do the same thing. And then you got to work to get the, the motion back in your elbow. Well, the same thing with the spine, only we have all with 26 movable vertebra up and down the spine. And it's very easy for the one up above and the one below to take up the action for that one that's immobile. Okay, and so while this mobility is not happening, this disc is drying up. It's not getting the, the, the motion that it needs to feed it nutrients and also to, to push out all. Yeah, keep going. Ever let me know when I can interject a question for Oh, now. by all means, go now. I know we're recording so we can edit, right? The, when the disc degenerates and um, it has lost its hydration and its height, the end plates of the vertebra uh, are uh, scored or roughed up and the bone loses its blood supply at the end plates. It's called um, osteochondrosis. And that's when the blood supply is no longer to the bottom or the top or the sides of the vertebra or any bone. So once the blood supply stops in the bone, the bone degenerates even further. So the sooner people replace these bad discs when they're degenerated, the less chance of a severe osteochondrosis situation for those specific vertebra surrounding the tissue. Oh, there you are, David. I can see you on one screen and not on another. Yeah, that's, yeah, he, that's okay. Uh, Sue, Sue picked up where you froze there for a little bit. Thanks for jumping back in. I don't know what happened. My screen went out. I, it, it actually dropped it off of uh, the Zoom. So I, I just re-logged on. So I'm not sure what happened there. Yeah, no, that's okay. I'm glad you did it. Keep thinking on your feet like that. So, <laughs> so, da so David, there. tell us about how you ended up deciding, first, how you discovered disc replacement, and then how you decided to do it. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, so as a chiropractor, obviously I'm, I'm, I'm going to chiropractors for, for my issue. Um, years go, went by, you know, and, and um, it, it, I was always in pain. I was always figuring out, trying to figure out how I was going to do this. Um, of course, you know, taking x-rays, we know, um, getting MRIs, we know, um, you know, what, what the, uh, uh, you know, what, what the actual, um, situation is in the spine at those levels and um you know i even had nerve conduction studies done and um, i was losing you know i was losing the nerve conduction and so i wanted to um i wanted to uh i wanted to treat it conservatively and i mean i did that for so many years and i mean i was getting decompression i was getting uh you know i got acupuncture um, I have a massage therapist. I was uh, getting massage. Yeah, you can see there you go. Um, where the arrows are is, um, is, is C6 is where it compressed. And um, you can see that on both sides of C6 that I had um, some severe degeneration there. In well, the and, yeah, and you sent me this picture too of a normal spine. Right. Uh, and, and you've highlighted the curvature of it That's that, right, com yeah. that comes with it. And then we go get to look at uh, your spine. Um, and that curvature is gone, right? It's almost straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These these levels haven't collapsed. Uh, right, they did, and you can see how how they've widened out as well. There's a uh, there's a law called Wolf's Law, and it, what it does is if you put too much pressure on a bone, it will build up, it'll calcify, and you'll get uh, you'll get these calcifications. And so it, it, you know you can see the shape of the bones are completely changed. And uh, they've got this lipping and spurring happening. That's all a part of uh, the degenerative process. So, yeah, exactly where you're pointing. And, and it almost looks like that, that um, one's fused. But it, did, it wasn't fused. It was calcifying there. But you can almost see how it's in the front there. Because yeah. the, as the neck goes forward, you get forward neck pressure. And, uh, and you have pressure on the, on the you know, bones there. And that, that's a degenerative process. And um, so you can see how thin the discs were. Um, I was in increasing pain. I had dealt with it for years and years, and I got to a point where it was just not happening. And so I, uh, I went in and I actually got uh, some epidural shots. 
and uh, those gave me some temporary relief. I remember um, I was it was I was able to you know get away and go to my my niece's graduation and be able to bear it. But it was really to the point where I was starting to lose my dexterity, my hand. I could hardly pick up a pen to write with, and I'm like you know I really got to do something different. And I started uh, looking for surgeons. All the surgeons in my area really wanted to fuse my neck, put a spacer in there and fuse it. And um, of course, I, had, I have many, many patients that have had fusions. It's very common. And um, and then um, I started looking into implants. And um, before before we leave the fusion, um, yeah. I think all all three of us here and a lot of people watching perhaps have had some contact with fusion. Um, my story, and David, you probably don't know this, but uh, I've been a vocational rehab counselor for decades, and I've worked with a lot of people with failed back syndrome, and mm-hmm. um, and certainly thousands of people with low back injuries, uh, neck and back uh, surgery, discectomy, mm-hmm. tons of fusions, right. and and of course, as a voc rehab counselor, I tend to get the word, you know, I tend to get the ones that don't do great. Right, um, but sure, I've seen a ton of people with fusions with a lot of problems, and so we see a lot of people being very hesitant going that way now, um, especially with you know adjacent segment syndrome. Right. In fact, yeah. um, Sue, yes. why don't you t- Sue tell us briefly about adjacent segment syndrome, and then, we'll, Dave, and then David, I'll come back to you about implants. Okay. Uh, with the degenerative process of disc, um, we lose the height and the hydration compression. Um, of the healthy disc, um, and when that happens, the pressure um, is put onto the adjacent levels, uh, if you will. The cushioning factor is gone from the degenerative disc, and therefore it has to be absorbed, and it'll be absorbed above or below um, in adjacent levels. So we frequently see, very, very often see, a single level uh, degenerative disc disease turn into a multi-level degenerative disc disease and then multi multi mold. So if we can we can keep the spine mobile and have compression with a benefit like a prosthetic like uh, the M6 and put the um, natural motion back into the spine, we avoid that adjacent level disease uh, because of the pressure compression is taken off by the nucleus of the artificial disc. Um, and of course we see infusion patients that the Spine, once it's locked up, um, causes pressure to be put onto the next levels, uh, again, above or below. So anytime we can replace the um, bad disc with something that closely replicates uh, the human disc, um, we help to avoid any adjacent level problems. Yeah, excellent. Thank you, Sue. All right, David, so how'd how'd you get into implants? Oh, well, I'll tell you, I, um, I didn't want exactly, she, she said it exactly right, you know, and, and many times you see both, you know, above and below uh, problems with the discs there too. So I, I didn't want to, um, sorry, I'm, you know, I, did, I didn't want to um, have that, I didn't want, I didn't want a fusion, you know, and so I did, I started looking at implants and I actually started looking at surgeons in my area. And, um, and I started looking at the implants, you know, and there's the, the, the kind of ball and socket, you know, and I mean, you get, you get the, the, I'm not going to mention any, you know, manufacturers names or anything, but um, a lot of times things get uh, pushed through the FDA and, and everything. And we know this through, you know, drugs and everything else. Uh, it's, sometimes it's more political than it is practical and it's frustrating but, um, you know, there's a ball and socket thing out there, right? And well, it gives you all of the, the, you know, the rotation and this, but it doesn't give you any of the compression. It doesn't give you any of the lateral translational motion. And um, I actually had a patient who had one of those put in, and um, it, it, it promptly, you know, slid out of position and uh, migrated on his, on his spine because he was a very active guy. And, I, and so I've seen, you know, those things happen. I was looking for for something different. I knew that I didn't want, I, I had a feeling I was going to get disc implants and um, I ran a cry, you know, I just did my due diligence. I was all over the internet, found uh, betterdiscreplacement.com and uh, found you guys. And I, I, I looked at this and I watched the videos and I said to my wife, I go, look, this is, this is what I want to do. 
And I said, but it's not, um, you know, they're not approved here. They're made in uh, Sunnyvale, California, I think, right? Or somewhere there. I said, but you can't get them here. You got to fly over the ocean. And so she's like, well, what is it going to cost? Whatever we got to do. She saw me in pain and God bless her. She's a, she's a beautiful woman and a very, very big support to me through this whole process. And um, so she's like, okay, whatever we got to do. Um, and so we did. And uh, next thing you knew, uh, I mean, I actually, I was turning 50 that year and we had a, a trip to Hawaii planned. And one of my surgeons says, hey, you know, no big deal. You know, I mean, I, I, I'm immobilized. I mean, I'm like, just cut my arm off, you know I mean? And when you, even as a chiropractor, you know, going through all the schooling and seeing all these patients, you know, and I mean, I've had people just in so much pain and you don't get it until it happens to you. You just, you just don't, you don't get it. And now I see it in their eyes. I see it in their face. I'm like, I got it. I know what you're going through. <laughs> but that kind of pain where you just, yeah, like I said, just cut my arm off kind of thing and just get rid of it. Um, that's where I was at. And um, I had, it was going to be, um, you know, Hawaii 5 50 in Hawaii. We had, you know, our whole trip plan and everything. And I'm going, I told my wife, I said, I can't go. I, I will not enjoy this trip. Oh, and so we switched our tickets to, we flew into Berlin instead of Honolulu. And, um, you know, end up getting uh, the disc replacement. And I remember flying across the ocean. I looked at her and we're having all fun. You know, we're on British Airlines. We got these little pods. We're looking at each other. And I go, what the hell am I doing? I don't know the ocean. To, to have some guy I've never met before, you know, to, uh, do some surgery on me. But um, it, it just really, really felt like it was the right thing to do and the technology convinced me you know and then um you know and of course i, I do have to, to to give sue a lot of credit she was incredible to me gave me all the resources and uh and a team you know um everything was there you know and, and um, it was very easy to submit my um my mris and everything else and it's like but yeah you know you're you're a candidate and we can help you and so that's what I wanted to hear. And it really, once I found this, once I saw this technology and, and as the process went, um, I really didn't look back. I really didn't. I mean, I, I, that flash when you're flying over the ocean, you're going, you know. All right. <laughs> now, right. Yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's a moment of, of you know, reality. But once I got there, it was amazing. Yeah, I imagine you had a little bit of a gut check a couple times in the process. Um, <laughs> Patrick Key, by the way, uh, through the Facebook group, said to say hi, and, um, awesome. and, and he asked, really, what was your thought process about choosing uh, the Ananda team uh, and Dr. Ritter-Lang and, and the implant? Like, you know, obviously, you could have gone with other doctors. You could have gone with other implants. You could have, you could have had it done in the U.S., actually, um, but you chose to go elsewhere. So to, why was that? Yeah, you know, I, well, well. The, first of all, it was the it was the implant. It just made sense to me, and in my um, my knowledge of uh, you know the disc and, and and seeing you know the things that we've just talked about, and, and Sue explained, you know, uh, fusion just wasn't something I wanted to do. Uh, you know, I've seen that over and over. Um, I saw the um, I saw other things happening in other people's spine. So I had, I guess, a little, little bit or better, um, you know, understanding than, than somebody who didn't work with people's spines on a daily basis. But um, also, I, uh, I really liked the technology of the, um, of the M6. It really did. And we discussed earlier, you know, I had a list of people that I was able to to call and talk to people who had actually had the, had the, um, the surgery done, you know, and um, I actually talked to one doctor it was very interesting because he had another disc and I don't know, do we mention other disc companies here? I'm go ahead. It's fine. Uh, he had a wait, wait, let me say it this way. Not, not where the purposes of running any other hardware down. Uh, right because okay. all right well i won't he just had another manufactured disc one of the ball and socket things right and he had it on his lumbars and he was from colorado he was a big skier 
and it lasted for a little while. And he lost the, uh, you know, it, it, he lost he lost the stability there because there was nothing holding it there. Where where and then uh, the and then of course he had a, another one done above that, and this one was holding very well because of course you know you've got, you've got this whole uh, the, just the way that that this was engineered made sense to me and it was like if I'm going to do anything and I would have to do something, uh, obviously. So that it just was the best decision for me. And then, um, you know, then, you know, Sue got, you know, I get in hold of Sue. She was very responsive and everything. And, you know, my wife is, uh, she's, she's a really good planner too. So between all of us, we were on a plane, we were there. And, um, and then the experience there is a whole nother story. Right? Right, I'm going to pull up some pictures here, if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, let's see here. And maybe you can ex you can talk through them uh, uh, briefly. We don't need to make it the you know we're not trying to make it the slideshow the long family slideshow that everybody uh, dreads. Uh, <laughs> well, well, that's my wife Mary, and um, that's the Bakken Kohler. And uh, what 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 they do is, and, and right from the beginning, you get picked up at the train station. We got picked up at the train station because we flew into Berlin because we had changed our tickets from. Um, from Maui or from Hawaii, wherever we were. So uh, we flew into Berlin, took the train uh, up to, um, up to, not Stenham, right? Where, where's the, what's the town we go into? Bremen. Bremen, thank you, gosh. Um, so, so they picked up, uh, up at the train station, which, uh, which was very cool. But um, this is a little hotel that, um, that you stay in before you get in the hospital. And also um, where if there's anybody that's with you, like my wife came with me, she was supporting me. So she stayed there while I stayed in the hospital. And it was, uh, it was very common, it was very neat. It was, uh, it was middle of uh, February. Uh, I would suggest that people go in the spring or the summer or the fall, but um, you know, it just didn't work out that way for me. Um, I, I'm gonna throw my two cents in there. While I'm sure the weather's better, uh, I mean, well, I guess people know their conditions themselves, but if they're in that much pain, I, I don't know that they're scheduling based on weather so much as that's true, right? But yeah, uh, really. yeah certainly there there are there are times. The, yeah. the weather on the north side, northwest side of Germany is nothing compared to the Alps or to eastern Germany. So uh, a dusting of snow is normal in Bremen during the winter, um, but you know, 30 to 40 degrees is a piece of cake for people yeah. in severe pain. You know, yeah. we're not, we're not, you're not talking about 30 below over there on the west side. So Yeah, right. No, it wasn't below zero, but it was, it was cold coming from Southern California. Oh, yeah, California. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, here we are. This is at the back and cooler, too. They had some really amazing food. Of course, we were indulging and um, having a good time. And, um, you know, I, I, wrote a di I wrote a blog. It was kind of a diary of, and a blog of, of what was happening. And uh, I was continually amazed. Not, by, not, you know, the countryside was beautiful. You know, the, uh, the setting of the hospital was in this amazing little town. You know, I walked up and down roads. I took many, many pictures of some of the, some of the little family farms and stuff that, that are in the area. And, um, you know, it was really a great setting to you know to get away it wasn't a hustle bustle kind of thing you know it was really great and um you know the, it, I, I even mentioned this one time you know to, to be in the hospital and have my wife staying you know by herself across the street and kind of down the road and you know walking up and down the street in the dark to visit me and so forth you know the whole area it was it was I, I mean, I never had any qualms about it. It was very, it's very safe. It was very, you know, the whole environment was really neat. And the people were amazing, you know. I mean, I, I, I just, it turned into be the trip of a lifetime, really. I mean, I, I never expected that ever, but it really did. It really turned into be a really great, great trip for us. And, and we both enjoyed it. I want to throw in on that because my brother-in-law and his wife went over and he had three-level lumbar uh, ADR. Mm. And they, for them, it was like a second honeymoon, even though he, you know, obviously he was in horrible pain to get there, right. uh, you know, just in horrible pain is what sent him, you know, to go get the surgery. But the recovery process, which was such, and the treatment they got 
before surgery, during, during the hospital stay and after was such that they felt like it was uh, practically a second honeymoon. Even though, of course, you know, it, you know, physically he wasn't, you know, he was still recovering from surgery and things. But uh, man, they they loved it. Um, I'm going to move to a couple other uh, pictures here. So um, this one here uh, with uh, Melanie. So um, what's Melanie's job, and what did she do for you? Melanie was great. She was a coordinator. This, uh, this was before my surgery. And so she uh, welcomed me to the hospital and um, she gave me my schedule. She introduced me to everyone uh, who I would be working with, <clears throat> excuse me. And um, she was just there for me to, uh, she was my, my liaison. She was there for me to be with or to explain everything. She went, she sat in with uh, my, my, um, my my uh, consultation with Dr. Rudlang and Dr. Spiller, and um, I uh, I was able you know so she was involved in every step of my process there, and uh, you know anything I needed I could go to to Melanie. She was, she was great. any problem with language barrier? No, you know, and it was so funny because I had taken this Pimsleur course, you know, and I was listening to it on the plane, and I was going to speak German, and I learned some stuff, you know, it was kind of fun. Um, I think that some of the nurses uh, uh, got a kick out of me, you know, trying to speak some language. Uh, I always do that when I go somewhere else. German's not really easy to learn. Um, <laughs> I can't remember anything right now, you know. I can, it's right. not beer, it's beer, right? And, uh, right so, yeah. And then how about this picture? I love this one. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, the, the, um, the, the consultation really sets you at ease. And, um, you know, uh, it's, it's like, you know, the, and the guy's done, you know, thousands of these uh, implants. And so um, when, you, when you think about it, you, you want to go to somebody who's done, done it before, you know? I mean, and I know there's trials. I, I think there's trials going on in the U.S. And I think it's going to be able to be um, available. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I, I was studying that then, but it wasn't available then and it wasn't an option for me. But, um, you know, when you go to a guy who's done thousands and thousands of these, and, and, you know, and, and Patrick and, and Jill and other people that um, recently have been there, you know, when you go and you think, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to have fusion in, and all of a sudden he's like, look, we can do this. We can put an implant in there. And, um, you know, I heard many stories like that where, where, you know, people were just, their spines were just really in bad shape. And they were able to get these disc implants and gave them a lot of hope. But uh, I, I was really uh, impressed with so many things um, from, you know, from, from having a sit down before, uh, before the surgery, having the anesthesiologist come in and talk to me uh, from, uh, you know, the, the um, I, I don't know, is Rolf still there? He was amazing. He just retired. Oh my gosh. Yeah. He was, he was amazing. So, uh, he was, he was just made sure that everything was taken care of. I remember we wanted to go, it was after my surgery. And of course I'm up and, and mobile and walking around the whole time, you know, right immediately after surgery, ambulatory, I wasn't like bedridden and laid there, you know? Uh, so I think the next day, I mean, I was up and walking around. And, um, so I think like, uh, I think like day two or three after the surgery, I wanted to get out of there. And I remember we took a little trip to Delmenhorst. We took the burger bus, you guys probably know that, to, uh, to Delmenhorst, which is a little town next to uh, Stanham where the hospital is. And, um, you know, they're, they're like, you're, you're supposed to get your surgery, you're supposed to get your x-rays. And I go, oh, okay, so I can't go. Well, they called, it was like, hey, you know, hey, run down, get your x-rays right now. And so they, they hustled it up so we could leave. And I mean, they just accommodate us every single the way we did so yeah you're going through some uh some good slides there uh i saw hans he was the massage therapist yeah, i'll catch back up to that i just wanted people to be able to see your before and after here right uh, before and, and let's just look how how little space there is here you know it's funny because we see people uh online talking about disc replacement and their doctor saying Oh no, your your disc your space is compressed more than fifty percent, so you're not a candidate for disc replacement. And and then, but we've known lots of people who were essentially bone on bone who have had successful disc replacement, 
yeah. through, through the Ananda team. Um, I don't know what percentage you are, but when I compare, you know, the, your healthy spaces, this one's obviously wider than normal because of the compression here, I guess. But um, I just comparing these spaces and you're, you're approaching bone on bone in some spots. Well, yeah. and you know, those, those adjacent uh, segments there too. Yeah. I mean, you know, cause that, that, that segment's not moving a whole lot. I mean, you can see it's trying to fuse, so it's not, there wasn't a whole lot of motion in that anyway. So, so there, yeah, now you see the discs and you see the, you know, you see the, I, I believe they're titanium plates, right? And um, yeah. that's what, where we, you know, saw the grooves being put in there. And those, that's the end plate that, um, that actually adheres to the bone. And then uh, in between, I mean, it just looks like two end plates, but um, in between is, uh, is the polymer, uh, you know, essentially the disc that actually causes the motion in the implant. Yeah. So um, that's, that's, in, that's the insides. Yeah. Right. So then, uh, then this was the one of uh, Hans, and you've got a nice, uh, nice bandage on your neck here. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, this, this is, has to be uh, – I mean, this, I, this is, this is at, still at Stenum, so this couldn't, I think I went to, I think it was at Stenum for four days before I went to, uh, um, you know, into, into the, uh, to the other, the Park, Park Bremen, I think the hotel is called. Yeah. And, you, know, uh, you I, I'm sorry about getting off, chrono, off chronology here, but something just kind of hit me. You, you know, pre-op, right? Pre-op, you had a chance to meet with, you said your anesthesiologist, you met with Dr. Ritter Lang. Um, they went through your whole whole protocol with you. Yeah. Um, did you feel like you were being treated like an adult? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I even um, I, I even wrote about that, and uh, it, it just there there was I uh, it, it, you know, and, and the fact that that's all they do. You're not in a hospital that's being rushed around with a bunch of sick people and coughing kids and all that. You know, all they're doing in this bunch hospital, of bunch of MRSA yeah. carriers. Yeah, you know, I mean, all they're doing is is you know replacement surgeries. You know, and uh, um, you know, and, and his specialty. I mean, I know he does you know hips and other joints, but um, you know, when when a guy's done so many, I mean, you're talking about your spine. You know, this is your life force. This is you know the the thing that makes you move. You know, your spinal cord is in there, and that's what runs your body. So. Um, it's pretty serious, you know, so you want to make sure, but, but the answer to that is absolutely. And from the very beginning, you know, I mean, and I've been in the hospital before I've advocated for family members in hospitals in the United States. And I mean, I, you know, I mean, I, I, and I have my, my sister's a nurse, my, you know, I have, I have surgeons in my family. I have a whole family of doctors. And so, um, you know, and I know that, that most people have good hearts and they want to give the best care ever, but the system just sometimes doesn't allow that. And so, you know, being in a system and, you know, my, my dad just passed away a year ago. My uncle just passed away a couple of weeks ago and going to facilities that are taking care of people, you know, you need an advocate. I mean, because the, the people there are just going through the motions are clocking in and clocking out. And, um, you know, there are people who, like I say, really love what they do and really care. And I'm not, I'm not saying there's not, but I'm saying that the system is set up. Um, you know, it's like, look, you, you, this person's got 15 minutes with you. So, you know, boom. And then you got to go to this person and then you got to go to that person. And so, but when I got to, to the Stenham hospital, it was like I was at a hotel. I mean, it really was. And um, people checked in with me. The nurse's station was right down the hall. It wasn't, you know, one nurse to, you know, 500 patients you know, or whatever the, the, the legal ratio is. I know that my sister's got caught on nursing floors where she was, uh, where she had to just say no because it was her license at stake. And they were asking her to take care of way more patients than was legal, you know. And so that stuff happens, but, but I just really felt like I was taken care of. And um, you showed some food there and I was like, okay, we'll, we'll see what happens. My wife was bringing me, sneaking me food in and whatever, but the food at the hospital was really good, man. I was really, really nice. I'm like, okay, well, 
I'm going to see what's for lunch today. And they would bring you a little menu. You could check out what you wanted. And um, it was just really, I mean, you know, I mean, I mean it, was, I'm, it was, I'm kind of going over the top, but comparatively speaking, it is over the top. Uh, well, when my brother-in-law went, half the pictures he took were of the food in the hospital. I mean, he kept, he was like, it was like this, you know, as far as portion size and what he was getting and, and, and all of that. And it, it's funny, it, it seems like a trivial thing, okay? But I've got to tell you, if I'm traveling abroad to, for any reason, I'm actually pretty, I want to make sure I'm going to get good food and I'm going to like it. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm just, I'm horrible that way. Uh, but, but I just remember all these pictures of him with his food. And, um, but I asked about the thing about, did you feel like you were treated like an adult? Because that's a theme I've heard over and over and over again is a lot of times the doctors, people who've gotten, let's say they're, they've had to go get a discectomy or laminectomy or whatever, half the time they're not seeing their surgeon, the actual surgeon before surgery. Um, and if they are, it's very brief uh, or they feel like they're being talked down to. And the, um, the experience is totally different than, than I think the experience that, you, that you've described. And Sue, I've heard you talk about it before too. And Sue, you had some surgeries in the U.S. before you went to Germany. Is that right? Uh, not lumbar surgeries, no. Okay. Um, I had some other, but, um, you know, at, the, at our clinic, uh, during the pre-op testing, it's, it's very important that the staff is really focused on explaining everything in detail and trying to have each patient as informed as possible. So uh, questions are answered when the blood analysis is done pre-op. Questions are answered when the EKG is done pre-op. Questions are answered when the x-rays are done. And then the meeting with the anesthesiologist to go over what medications a patient's on and what pain management is going to work for the patient. So it, it's, it's never, there's never um, any other thought than to um, teach the patient and inform the patient of exactly the care that we're uh, trying to uh, present to the patient and then to ask their feedback. Is there something in addition they want? Is there a different medication that works for them? Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's a great system. I wish so much, so much that we could do the same thing here in the States. I mean, it's been 13 years now that, I, that I've worked with uh, Dr. Ritterlang and yeah. with the team. And I just haven't seen the progression here in the States. You know, 13 years later, I, you can't have a three-level lumbar disc replacement like I had, you know. And here I am, 13 years later, riding horses, you know. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, anyway, um, there's never the thought of treating anybody immaturely. It's all about education and about what's the best, the best we can do for each patient. That's fantastic. All right, uh, you mentioned uh, you mentioned the Park Hotel. I pulled up a picture, uh, one of your pictures of it. So, um, tell us a, tell us about the Park Hotel. What's the story here? Well, uh, it, it was it was really nice, uh, and, and, and you know what? That that's one of the things that uh, um, it, it's a it's a great place to recover because by the time you get there, you're through your surgery you've you've been cleared to you know and, and and lumbar may be different i mean um if somebody got a lumbar surgery they might not be up and walking but certainly cervical and, and, and um most of the uh most of the people that have called me have been have been cervical patients so um well let me let's let's address that right now um sue are people up and walking after lumbar surgery all patients are up within 24 hours of surgery wow amazing Oh. Yeah, my my brother-in-law was um, after they moved to the park hotel. I know he was walking many miles in that park and in town. We, and then I interviewed one gentleman who um, he wanted to go for a walk. Okay, so out for those people who don't know, outside of Stenham Hospital, it's kind of like a park too because it's out in this you know out out in this out in the countryside. And uh, he wanted to go first day after his surgery, go for a walk outside the hospital. And um, I think that they did tell him no um, at that point. But the next day, he was out there doing that. Yeah. And um, I know that a lot of it, that's the other theme I hear about. Not only are people treated like adults before surgery, but they're treated like adults after surgery. They're involved in their own care. They get to make decisions about their own care. The doors aren't locked. Uh, the windows actually open. 
Um, <laughs> you know, I've never seen a U.S. hospital like that. Uh, and anyway, so and then um, and then as I understand it, people are in the can be in the hospital uh, a few days to many more if they need it. Um, but then ultimately get transferred to the Park Hotel. Sue, did you have a, you raised your hand there for a sec. Well, um, patients stay as long as they need to. Um, our standard plan is for most patients to be with us an average of five days in the hospital post-operative. But some patients, like David, uh, Dr. Noonan, uh, Mike, yourself, th day three, you wanted to go. Um, a lot of patients want to go sooner. Uh, we'd like to have them a little bit longer just to make sure everything is exactly as it needs to be. Um, and once a patient um, see the doctor and the doctor says it's okay to leave, then of course the patient can go. If the patient wants to stay an extra day or two in the hospital, that's no problem. They can stay an extra day or two and it doesn't change the plan or the cost or anything else. Some patients will actually stay seven or eight days in the hospital. Try, that, so much try that here. Yeah. <laughs> try that in the US or Canada, good luck. Um, no, no, it's, it's not possible here yet. Yes, it's not possible. Right. Someday. You know, I, I, I want to tell a story because you, you asked about how we were treated and, and, and it has to go with the relationship of the people that, that are there. Oh gosh, just the time that you have at the hospital, you know, you're, they're not these dry people that don't, you know, they're just, like I say, just punching a time card and taking your chart. You know, they, they really are, um, they really made the stay at the hospital. You walk into the hospital, on the, and you go through the glass doors, the receptionist is on the right, on the left is a mosaic that says love, light, and life. And that's really the philosophy of the hospital and the staff. And, and love is the first one. <laughs> it's love, light, and life. And they embrace it a lot differently than we do. It, it is, um, yeah. Uh, I kind of get teary when I think about it because I lived there for a long time and really absorbed a lot of it and, and, and missed some of it. So tell us, David, about your experience with the Park Hotel. They transfer you to the Park Hotel after the hospital. And, yeah. and wow, look at this place. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty amazing. And um, it was very, I mean, the, the beds were so soft. And um, it, it's, it's really, I think that, oh, there you go, yeah. I think <laughs> my wife took that picture because I slept for 12 hours straight. I did not, and she's like, he's sleeping, you must, you must need the rest. And so, um, you know, the beds were so comfortable. But we, we had a great time there. And um, I think that it's, uh, it's a couple miles to walk down uh, in front of the park and then uh, across uh, into, you know, through this train station, which was great, and then into the square there where you see these pictures and it was beautiful. I mean, really amazing. I mean, we spent a lot of time down there and um, as you show, we went to restaurants and, um, you know, drank the beer and had the food and uh, enjoyed. Uh, and, and uh, you know, I was up, I wasn't in any pain. And um, I think that I, I like my whole idea was to get off of all the pain meds before I even left. And I think I, I think I did that. You know, they get, obviously they gave me some pain meds. You know, because when you have that kind of thing done, um, you know, you're, you're, they're messing with the soft tissues. There's some swelling there, but um, I, I think that it was really I, I was pretty darn comfortable. And um, what what none of the shows is I flew back and spent a couple of days in New York and kind of tromped all over New York before I went home. My sister was there going to film school. We, we, uh, we stayed with her. And, um, uh, you know, I tromped up and down the streets of New York, you know, and uh, for two days. And um, I don't know. I mean, we, we, we did New York right, just kind of like we did Bremen right. But um, one of the things that uh, we did find, too, and it's, I, I made a little video in my, in my – um, blog about it was the schnorr right in the you got to find the schnorr if you go there you got to go in there that's a really neat thing too so the 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 german countryside at the at the um at the hospital um bremen the the whole the whole town you know every day we went out and walked and walked and walked and walked and walked and came home and and, and i slept and rested and um you know it was really a great great post-op way and I really think you guys got it right. I mean, I, you know, to, to come off a of surgery, of course, 
you know, one of the real reasons is, is you don't, they don't want you to fly, you know, right after you don't want you to have an embolism or something like that right after surgery. So you want to make sure that you're not up in the air and changing, you know, the altitude and whatever, and the pressure. But, um, yes, yeah. Sue, Sue's got a comment, I think, on that. Go ahead. Yeah, just a, a one quickie on there. Um, uh, we do uh, heparin uh, therapy for t- 10 full days uh, to reduce the risk of DVT. And for your uh, information, boys, the um, surgeons that we've operated on from the stage usually leave it five days post-op. Uh, we have one neurosurgeon um, who was leaving three days post-op as long as he does have the therapy first and okayed it. Um, the other thing is that um, you went to New York and you were um, day tripping and whatnot. We know that it's safe when you leave the, the OR that that press fit uh, implant is safe and you can travel internationally without doing damage to it. So international travel, you've got all sorts of jarring and bounces and air turbulence and whatnot, and we know the implant's safe. So there's never been um, an, an M6, there's never been an M6 dislodged um, during travel home um, or from that turbulence right after, So uh, or period. We haven't had anybody have a, an M6 come out. I'm not gonna talk about the older models, um, you know, being misplaced because that has happened before. Um, but the M6 is perfectly fine. So, um, yeah. And so what I love, uh, is that, you know, you were, David, you were set up, you were set up to succeed, uh, both in the hospital and out, right? You had as much time as you needed in the hospital and more if you wanted it, uh, yeah. the care you needed in the hospital, then transferred to a really posh hotel, Um, a great place to recover where you could walk in the park and go be a tourist. And it sounds to me like you really enjoyed being a tourist. Um, And then you were, then you went to New York and you were a tourist there too. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty amazed with really, really with the whole thing. And then Sue, you mentioned, you know, other doctors uh, coming to Germany to have surgery with the Ananda team, neurosurgeons, and, and others, I, that's pretty high praise. And I think I've also seen posts of uh, surgeons coming from Brazil and, and other countries to get training yes. um, uh, from the Ananda surgical team and Dr. Ritter Lang in disc replacement. And I'm thinking that is really great. I, I, it, it seems to me that it truly is one of those centers of excellence that um, people flock to for their treatment, but also that in, you know, the, the team invest themselves in others so that disc replacement is done properly really around the world. Right. Right. And yeah. Dr. Ritterlang is a teacher. He is a teacher and a mentor and many of the uh, surgeons um, in the, um, in the OR center are being taught. Now they are not the ones to operate on our patients, but they are for surgical assists in many cases. So as opposed to a nurse for surgical assist, you have an orthopedic surgeon for a first surgical assist. And that surgeon is learning from, as we refer to him as the master um, doing his work. So, um, and teaching is something that Dr. Ritter Lang is, is just adamant about. He wants, he wants everybody to, to learn this and the, the motion preserving um, techniques that, that he, he loves and, and believes is you know, such an improvement to all of his patients. So, um, yeah. Now, David, is there, is there anything else that you'd like to share? I mean, about your kind of your, you, you really have a unique perspective as a chiropractor going in, going down this road, you know, what do you, what do you think? I don't know. I, what do you think is, is unique about your perspective because of, your training and stuff. Excuse me. I'm going to bow out for a second. Okay. I do want to ask you to ask the question because of the label um, to adjust um, or replace. If you can, you know, address that, but I have to bow out because I have, I actually have a bow out at my door. (laughs) All right. All right. Sue, thank you for your time and we'll let you go. Thank you so much. David, it's so good to see you and I'll have questions for you later. Okay. Awesome. See you soon. Bye guys. Yeah, yeah, the adjust or replace. Um, I, you know, I, I don't think that it's always that, that clear. And, and obviously, you know, I would always say adjust first. And, um, you know, and like I said, you know, it's, for me, it, it's, it's, you know, um, whatever works, drugs and surgery last. You know, the, the, you don't want to go and uh, jump into a surgeon's 
table, you know, the first thing off the bat, if you can have some um, you know, conservative care that's going to help you. And yeah, I know a surgeon here where I live whose first impulse is fusion. So yeah. it uh, scares, yeah. kind of, scares well, the crowd out of me. Right, and I mean, and, and, and I do know that I've, that I've helped many, many people mobilize their spine. And when you get that mobilization, you can actually see the disc plump up a little bit, you know, from that mobilization. So, you know, um, there, there are many, many therapies that you can do, including chiropractic, that will, um, that will you know, but, but if it gets to a point where you're, you know, I was debilitated, I was trying other things. Um, it was like my, you know, it, it was, it was, it was my last choice, but, um, yeah, David, what, what, what symptoms should, let's say somebody is, um, they're, you know, I mean, Hey, you should be, everybody should try to address with conservative measures first, right. Except in very extreme circumstances. Sure. And sometimes that's chiropractic. Sometimes it's physical therapy. Other people are trying acupuncture and, and really all sorts of, all sorts of things. There's all kinds of stuff to use. Yeah. At what, at what point, what's when, what symptoms would you say, Hey, if you're starting to have these symptoms, now you should be looking at perhaps a surgical remedy rather than a conservative remedy. Well, if you, if you have symptoms that aren't, that aren't being um, alleviated by the conservative care that you're trying and you've done, you know, you've done it for several, you know, in my case, several, you know, over the 26 months, where I uh, I was I, I was not I was losing function. So when when you have nerve compression that's bad enough that it's actually causing a disability. You know you're not able to do the things that you need to do. You know and I, like I said a lot, a lot of there's a lot of pain involved. But you know pain is pain is not dysfunction. Pain can cause dysfunction. But when you're talking about the motor part of the nerve and when it stops working, then you're really getting into a serious situation. And um, I'm not saying that conservative care can't help you then either, but if it's not working, you know, and you're trying every other thing, um, you know, I mean, you really, you really do got to look at that. And I, it's, it's really an individual choice, you know. I, I mean, people, I always tell people that they're, they're their own doctor, their own best doctor. And, um, you know, I've learned more from my patients than I ever learned from, you know, the schools that I've, you know, the schooling that I've gone through, because if you really listen to people, you can, you can, you can really find out what's going on with them. But, um, but you, you don't want the nerve compression to happen for, for so long that it's never going to, it's never going to regenerate, you know, we used yeah, to think that's... that it never would regenerate, but it will, it will regenerate. Well, and that is, uh, that's one of those things that I've heard over and over again, and, and I preached it myself, was to tell people, look, you do not want to put yourself into back surgery until you can't live without back surgery. But I think that that has changed. Um, I, I don't know if you feel the same way, but um, when, when the back surgery we're talking about is fusion, I understand the advice of don't get fusion until you have to get fusion. But with disc replacement, there's an option there's an option short of fusion and, and for many people in place of fusion, um, it just seems that, and, and you don't want to push it to the last minute because the longer that you've subjected your body to this, right, you've got chronic pain patterns that develop. Um, you've got uh, nerve damage that becomes more permanent and pervasive and getting it addressed with disc replacement before you go too far down that road, it certainly seems to be an advantage, at least from what I understand. Yeah, yeah. And, and making that and, and making that distinction when you're in that kind of pain and when you're going through that is really tough because you're kind of like, God, you know, am I bad enough? Is it gonna, you know, am I, am I gonna recover? You know, is this next thing I'm gonna do, we're gonna work. So it's really, you're, you're really, um, it's, you're really in a, in a tough decision-making process at the time, you know? It's not like you're, you're thinking clearly, you know? Ha having the surgery and talking to you now, <laughs> a totally different state of mind than when you are going into the surgery, when you're, when you're in excruciating pain, when, you're, when you are debilitated, um, you know? So it's a, it's a really tough decision to make. And so uh, I, I think that, that one of the, and, and I'm honored, when um, people contact me and say, hey, you know, they gave me your name and, and 
can you tell me your experience about this? And, um, you know, as a, as a doctor, I'll, I'll get on the phone with them and I'll ask them, I'll go through their history and how did it happen? And, and, and so I can help them, you know, walk them through the process because emotionally you're not in the same place. Emotionally, you're just like, like I said, I mean, I was at the point where it's like, just cut my arm off. If that's what you have to do to stop the pain that's shooting down it. Right. So, um, and then that's how your thought process is, you know, you're like, Oh, just stop the pain. Right. And so, um, so it, it, it's really great. I think that's a really great thing that you guys do is, um, is recruit people who have actually had successful surgeries and um, who, who are able to turn around and, and, and advise people when they're going through that phase, when they're really, really in that situation where they're, 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 they're looking for hope. I mean, they really are. They're just looking for hope. And if you can offer that to them, uh, you know, that's a big deal. So, well, and I'm sorry, sorry, Sue's not here to have heard you say what you just said, but I do know that all of Ananda's case managers are patients. They're former patients who've had uh, yeah. disc replacement, lumbar, cervical, some both. Uh, and so I think what's great is that, yeah, when they're in contact with someone who's considering disc replacement, they've been there, right? They've been, they've had the same, many times they've had the same symptoms, they've had the same depression, they've had the same desperation and um and they found a solution and you know that's the thing it is so hard about back injuries and you deal with this all the time you know doctor is it's that invisible injury right yeah. nobody can see it nobody can relate to it nobody experiences the pain that these patients are feeling and um you know, the spouse wants so much to relate and wants so much to help, but can't fully understand. I think sometimes the spouses go through as much torture as the uh, patients do. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a huge cause of, uh, of, of divorce. It's a huge yeah. cause of uh, family issues, you know. It's like, hey, let's go here. No, dad can't. His back's out. You know, he has to stay on the couch. And, you know, the whole dynamic of a relationship changes. And, and when one person suffers, you know, the other person suffers. I mean, if you have your soulmate, if you have your, you know, your, your partner, you're going through that, you know, they're right there with you. And so, um, yeah, no, it, it really does. It I, really I, does. So. I never really thought of it this way, but it works, it works out pretty great that Inanda sets it up in such a way that the, the patient and their spouse can come and go through the whole experience together. Go through the pre op That is huge. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, I, I, you know, it's almost like, hey, they experienced the torture together. <laughs> Let them experience the solution together. Um, and, and it really does bring them together. I told you my brother-in-law and his wife, they felt so much closer coming uh, and going through that process. And with Ananda lays it out where, right, your, your spouse has – um, you guys have that hotel um, before surgery, and then while while you're in surgery, she's got the hotel right across the street for all that for that time, and then you guys are at the um, Park Hotel after experiencing it together. What a what a blessing! Now that being said, I do know that some people can't work that out, and yeah. and they have. I would to recommend that, yeah. and I, I would recommend that, or at least have some uh, a partner come with you. I mean, I, I know a lot of people go alone, and I've. You know, I had friends recently that went alone, and, and here's another part of the story. Um, the, the hospital wasn't really crowded when I was there, and uh, there weren't any other disc replacement patients when I was there. I, really? Yeah, yeah, which I think is really rare. But um, I did kind of um, hook up with this guy who was a German guy, and he was getting his hip replaced, and he was a German retired cop, and, um, police officer, and... Uh, so I kind of hit it off with him for a little while, but then he left, right? And, um, but, um, you know, talking to the other people, um, you know, you meet other people who are going through the same thing and sometimes you're sharing the same room with them and, uh, you know, it, it, you, you get a camaraderie. And I know, I know that, that Jill and uh, 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 I think Patrick did, I, I don't know if Patrick had someone with him, but Jill, I know went, I think by herself and she, just was you know she was just chumming around with the with her fellow patients and you know going through the town and and um you know those are friends that you have for life and you're just uh you know it's uh it's something that you've gone through you've been in the foxhole you know, right. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I, I hear over and over from patients that they think one of the great benefits is when they arrive, they get to meet patients that are leaving. So they get to meet the patients who had surgery the week before. Yeah, which uh, I did, by the way. I, I did. There was, a, there was a group, and they were out, they were out with their poles, and they were out walking, and like they had these patches on their back. Like, <laughs> they're all, all – they were out. Really really well. yeah. yeah. um, and, then, and then you get to be with this group of patients – that are going through the exact same thing that you are going through, um, you know, maybe three, four other patients. And um, you just don't see that in a U.S. hospital, at least that I'm aware of. Um, so yet another one of those, uh, uh, of those benefits uh, of the experience. Hey, I, uh, doctor, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. I've already taken more than I told you we would. And, um, but is there anything you'd like to share? I know also that you've been um, a real big uh, fan of nutrition and other modalities to, uh, to kind of help you through this process. Is there anything that you'd like to, to share there? Yeah, well, you know, I think that um, a lot of people get in problems because, you know, with their spine, especially their low back, because of their physical condition, you know, and they're not keeping themselves in shape. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, especially the lumbar spine, you know, you, you look at your body, you've got your chest cavity, you know, and you've got all these bones and stuff up here in your upper body and down below you got your pelvis and between there, all you got is this, this spine, you know, and you've got this, you know, network of muscles. So, you know, keeping those in shape is, is huge, you know, and also not being overweight, not putting extra, you know, uh, weight bearing on the spine it's going to be a huge preventative thing for most people. Well, so, not, and not just preventative. I mean, we've got to remember that in the time leading up to surgery, yes, anything, anything people can do to strengthen the core to, uh, with, uh, you know, drop some weight, um, anything they can do to improve circulation and, uh, condition around the spine, whether that's the neck or the back is going to make it that much easier during recovery. And then of course, after, you know, my, my brother-in-law, for instance, does a lot of core exercises uh, for his spine, um, and, and he does great. We just got done with a, literally a 4,400-mile road trip through the western U.S. and Canada. We drove in two weeks, a little over two weeks, drove all, all those miles. Not once did he ask for us to pull over for him to stretch or for us to take a break or let's not drive so much this day. Not at all, but sometimes in the evening, you catch him doing some bird dogs and other core strengthening things. So, yeah. so that kind of yeah. stuff is not just preventative, but it's also pre-op and post-op, I think. Well, and I, I always tell everybody, and it doesn't matter what kind of injury you have, whether it's your spine or your shoulder or, or whatever, you know, rehab is for life. Because once you've, once you've injured yourself, your body's going to heal scar tissue. You really just need to stay active, you know. And I think there's a there's a problem with uh, with people who who have surgeries or whatever. And it's like, okay, so you had your surgery. Now you're going to uh, you know PT, and oh, I got six weeks of PT. And when they're done with PT, they're like, yeah, I'm rehab. So, um, but they're not. You know, you just you, you've got to do it for life, man. I mean, it's your body. You're in it. It's the only place that you really have to live. You know, your house is come and go, and you're you know, whatever, but your body, you it's going to be with you until the day you die. So take care of it. And it includes nutrition. And, you know, you hit on that. Um, you know, if you're putting good stuff in your body, you know, I mean, chiro you know, we've made the thing about chiropractors and doctors, doctors, you know, they study pathology, which is, you know, the body working wrong we study physiology and treat physiology, which is, you know, all the cells and things in your body doing what they're supposed to do. So if you're feeding them and treating them uh, and treating your pathology, or excuse me, your physiology and keeping your physiology working the way it's supposed to, then you're going to have less and less problems moving into pathologies, whether it's, you know, all the chronic diseases, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, you, you can you yep. name them all. I mean, yeah. Heart disease, you know, diabetes and all this stuff is all, preventable most of the time um, it's caused by the environment that we that we put our body in so mm -hmm. change the environment change you know change it and um, you know and, and so yeah so I, I'm a big advocate of, uh, of, of health and nutrition and putting good stuff in your bodies and now I'm actually um, supporting my body with with um, hormone replacement because as you age 
your especially your growth hormone goes down. So now I, I'm, I'm right. advocating and I'm, I'm actually um, representing a, a company that has a, a growth hormone supplement that can actually raise your growth hormone and put your body back into homeostasis. And, okay. Um, if people if people want more information about that, what's the best way for them to to get it? Great. Well, you, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm here on Facebook. It's uh it's David Noonan. I do have a, a page that's Doctor David Noonan. Um, so you can get a hold of me either way there. Um, and certainly I um you know I'll add, I'll answer that. Um, I uh, you know I'm on I'm on you know I mean I'm on Instagram. You know I'm on LinkedIn. So I do a lot of social media. Um, I'm not hard to find. You can probably Google me and find me, Dr. David Noonan. Um, Excellent. It'll be easy to find me and just give me, a lot of people do seek me out for different things. Um, well, and I just appreciate how um, you made yourself available today. I mean, it, this has been, what, about five years from your surgery? You did this in 2013? 2013, yeah. And um, how are you feeling? <laughs> we forgot to ask that. How are you yeah. doing? Well, you know, uh, that's great. And, and I was going to say something about that, but um, I'm doing well. And, uh, you know, well, right, I'm watching you do this with your neck. So yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I'm moving around, you know, I got a little scar. And by the way, the scar pretty much goes away. I mean, when you, when you first get that, that uh, thing peeled off, you're like, oh my gosh, that's going to leave a mark. I'm going to be Frankenstein for, you know, Halloween. But um, it, it, Boy, I mean, you know, you can you already go and see. It. I have to show people, but um, anyway, you know, having the story I have, you know, it's, I'm proud of the scar. But uh, but you know, right out of surgery, we talked about how I was able to get up and walk and do different things. My my, um, I, I, I was a big triathlon uh, triathlete at the time, and I really wanted to do another triathlon, and so um, that was my that was my thing. And so swimming, I could do right away. Swimming was very easy for me, and um, you know I was able to turn my head. I was able to do my my strokes, and actually I think that was very very therapeutic for me to swim. And there was no you know, there was no impact or anything like that. Um, you know I was I, I asked about running, and Dr. Spiller said you can do it. You know, and I said okay. You know, so I was out running. The, the thing that I did have an issue with uh, immediately, I tried cycling, and to hold my head up was tough for me. It was sore for a little while. But um, I remember there was one day and I made a Facebook live on it uh, and I put the video out and I was like, and, and one day all of a sudden it was like, I went out for a bike ride and, and I, it was good. It was like, I had no pain and I ran, I rode 20 miles that day wow. and I remember being on the strand and it was a beautiful day. And I go, so, Hey, you know what? A, a triathlon is in my future. And, and so, I don't recommend this, but I've seen people cycling. I, I, I've talked to people about their stories of cycling while they were at the park hotel. They were oh. renting bikes and riding, but my guess is they weren't on a racing bike. So it wasn't that yeah, no, I'm bent over, over, yeah. it was, you know, beach cruiser kind of thing. Sure. Right? sure. And in, and, and in Bremen, I mean, everybody rides bikes there. They got bike lanes and yeah. okay, that's all good. Yeah. But I, but I'll, I'll just add this. I, I, um, and I, I don't remember the exactly, but my wife got us on a training program and we, uh, we started training for hiking because we had a scheduled trip to the Grand Canyon. And I think it was eight weeks after surgery, we hiked from the top to the bottom and back up in, in 10 hours. What? Are you kidding me? Yeah. And then, and this then was how many weeks, how many weeks after surgery? Eight, eight weeks. Eight weeks. And then, um, and then, gosh, I think it was 15 weeks. I, um, I did, I, I really believe it was 15 weeks. I did a triathlon and I beat my time in the Redondo Beach triathlon that I did two years before. And so, um, that was really a great thing. I, I really, and, and I, and I'm not, I don't know if it was exactly 15 weeks. And then the following week, I went and I did the half marathon. I ran across, it was in San Francisco, I ran across the Golden Gate Bay Bridge and, and did the half marathon. So I got right back into action, you know? I, I didn't sit around. I mean, I knew, here's what my deal was, guys. And, and mindset is huge when it comes to healing. Mindset is huge when it comes to health, right? So I, when, I, when I made the decision to do this, I knew like I knew like I knew that I was going that this surgery was going to be successful for me and that I was going to get my body back and that I wasn't going to be one of these 50 year old old guys. That was, that was my fear. And I wasn't going to do that. 
And I did it. You know, I, I had the mindset and I went out and I, like we talked about, I provided the proper nutrition in my body. I got back into training. I, you know, it's not like I jumped into a CrossFit class right away, but you know, I eased into it. I eased into it by the hiking and the, and the cycling and the, and the, you know, the running and different. And I got back into the weight room, but I got my body back, man. And, um, and um, I actually won a contest with the nutrition company that I was in because of my body transformation through that period. So, you know, it, you, you know, you, you just, um, God, you just got to live, man. You got to go for it. And, and, you know, once I got to tell you too, once you go through something like this and um, once you put yourself out there like that, you know, you, I mean, other things in life become very, very small things that we thought were like, Oh my God, that's such a big problem. It's like, no, not really, not really, you know? So um, I would encourage everybody just to, you know, I mean, and this, and this is what I love doing now. It's just, you know, encouraging people just to live their best life, whether it's, you know, I mean, I mean, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're not in a, in a good job, you know, find something you love to do and follow your passion, you know, um, relationships, uh, gosh, but, but, but your body, I mean, and that's really where my focus has been through my career and through my life. I've always been into fitness and, and whatever, but, you know, take care of yourself, man, because it makes everything else in your, in your life good. And when you do have an injury, when you do have something that, that's kind of out of your control, uh, you know, like this is, you know, I mean, it was a football injury. I, I, I loved playing football, you know, but it, it degenerated. I tried everything and I found you guys. I'm grateful for that. Um, and, um, you know, and gratitude is a huge part of, uh, you know, of raising the collective consciousness too, right? I mean, you know, we want to be there. Gratitude is a huge thing uh, in my life too. So um, I, I'm grateful for you guys. And, and I'm also grateful for the opportunity to be able to share. So thank you for having me on here. And also, um, you know, the, the people that I've been able to help have, have come to me with, with just the same gratitude. I really appreciate, you know, you uh, for, for turning me on to you guys. So, um, you know, it's a, the camaraderie is a big thing and we're kind of like a fellowship. Well, David, I, I mean, uh, my hat's off to you for doing everything you've done. Uh, for your recovery, but also to kind of share the solution you found with others, because I know that in fact, just recently, you know, um, I heard from uh, a gentleman, Patrick, who really gives you great credit uh, for helping him to learn about what his options are. And man, is he grateful? I mean, he, he's, he says he's got his life back. Yeah. And, that's awesome. um, you know, I hear that is the phrase. If there's one phrase I hear over and over and over from talking with people who have uh, gone to Ananda to have disc replacement surgery is I got my life back. I hear yeah. it over and over. So uh, I am super grateful for you taking the time out here today. Um, I would be remiss um, to, if I skipped a couple things. One is if, if you're watching this and you're interested in just finding out if disc replacement is a potential solution for you, then if you go to the Ananda website, uh, you can uh, start the process of getting um, a, a consultation. It's enande.com. So enande.com. Um, and um, it's a really easy process. You can send your MRIs in through an upload service that they've created for you so that the surgical team can look over your films and tell you whether you're a candidate. And I can share with you that um, the truth is um, that they don't just like give, say everybody's a candidate um, over and over. Uh, you know, there've been people on you know, sad that they're not a candidate, but it's not like, Oh yeah, send it in and they'll just tell everybody that they're a candidate. It's just not true. In fact, um, doctor, you said, you know, six months of conservative care. Um, and that's a rule I've heard um, Dr. Ritter Lang use several times is they don't, unless you have tried to remedy this through appropriate conservative measures, that has to be done first before uh, surgery is even seriously considered. So anyhow, if you want an evaluation, go to um, inanda.com. The other thing that 
I would point out to you is there's a, a book available. Um, it's uh, written by Dr. Lang, uh, Britta Lang and Dr. Jan Spiller, uh, the uh, main surgeons at Inada. And you can get it on Amazon. It's called To Fuse or Not To Fuse, How Artificial Disc Replacement, Hybrid Fusion, and Fusion Alternatives Are Changing the Way We Think About Spinal Surgery. You can find that on Amazon for cheap, or if you'd like, if you go to the Inanda website, uh, inanda.com, I think in the upper right hand corner is a button you can click and they'll send you the paperback book for free. So um, if you just want information about disc replacement and fusion and other spinal surgeries, great resource. And if you wanna know if it's right for you, then start that um, evaluation process. So uh, again, uh, David, thank you so much and I'll let you go. Uh, for those people who wanted to watch it live, I'm sorry, <laughs> it didn't happen because of technical issues. But I'm just grateful for your patience in watching this. Take care. And thank you. Thanks, David. Good night. Good night, everybody. All right. Bye-bye.